check, check, testing. Check, check. Check, check. Red, check, testing. Testing, one, two, three. Check, testing. Nope. I can't tell. Okay, I'm going to pray really quick and then we'll get started. God, thank you for this day and I thank you that, um, Lord, you continue to bless us, God, even though we don't deserve it, God. And I pray that, um, Lord, as we go into this time of worship, that our hearts and our minds will just be completely focused on you and what you have to say. And in our pray, amen. Let's stand for worship. Rise 
It is my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, my pastor, Brother Paul Mulliken from Ripley First United Methodist Church. All right, let's see. My goodness, it's good to see all of you today. I appreciate Mr. Bobby welcoming here. I got a couple of things I got to pull out here so I can, can show you what's going on. Miss Laura English, who is also in my church, as Mr. Bobby is, and several others of you here, uh, she told me that y'all are looking at the theme of kindness. And, you know, a lot of things I thought about uh, in the scriptures, there's a whole lot in there about kindness. One of the things that kind of popped to my mind right off the bat was uh, the fruit of the Spirit. And, uh, you know, kindness is one of those seven different fruit of the Spirit, which is all really one that we grow. And when I think of something being a fruit of the Spirit, it's not something like you do, well, I might do it today and I might do it tomorrow. The fruit just kind of naturally comes out of your life. And, and it's just a part of your, your DNA, your being there. And, and so it's important to kind of have that sense in our hearts and our life. Uh, uh, kindness is more than just doing something nice for someone. It's, it's more than just having a, an occasional uh, spurt of oh, uh, just a random act of kindness every once in a while. Kindness that we're talking about that I think the Apostle Paul talks about in Galatians is that which just comes from within of us being um, filled with the Spirit of God. It helps us kind of exhibit that Spirit in our day-to-day -day activities. So I thought about the King of the, that, that passage from Galatians, but then the one that really caught my attention was another letter that the Apostle Paul had to Colossians. Because he says these words there. He says, therefore, this is Colossians 3.12. It says, therefore, as God's chosen people, and that's who you are, and as God's chosen people, you are holy and dearly beloved. Because of that, here's what you need to do. Some of the passages say, put on this. But I like the passage, the translation says, Clothe yourself, clothe yourself with these things, with, with compassion and kindness and humility and goodness and patience. Clothe yourself. Think about what that means to clothe yourself with something. Y'all, how many of y'all decided, you know, what to wear today? You know, I mean, every morning you kind of figure that out. You know, now I know over here and and, and Rose uh, and, and the school here. You're limited on your options and your choices, but there's other times that you go different things, and you, you get up in the morning and say, okay, uh, what am I going to wear today? Or maybe you're going to someplace special in the evening with a, some, some friends and all. Um, uh, how are you going to dress yourself? What are you going to look like? What are you going to put on? And, and uh, you know, when you're thinking about that, you, you, you get ready because you want to look good, right? You know, you don't want to, you know, pick out some pants with a raggedy old hole, you know, at your bottom. You know, that, that wouldn't be something that you want to wear. You know, you put those things on and it just don't look right. You say, no, nope, that's not what I'm going to do today. In fact, I was I was asking some of my folks uh, uh, at, uh, at the youth group last night who are affiliated here, and I said, so what do I wear when I come here? Do I have to wear a suit and tie, which I wear like one day a week if I can get away with that, you know. And I said, no. So I had to think about that as I got here. But now, now once you have decided what you're going to wear, once you've decided to, to, to pick out this outfit and, and decide whether to wear the khakis or the skirt or the blue or the red and all that stuff, you think, okay, I look good. And you come into school or you come into wherever you're going and everybody sees you that you look good. Now, once that happens, you don't go and take your clothes off, do you? Yeah. <laughs> do you? Okay, you worry me. <laughs> but, but that's it. You, know, that, you don't clothe yourself just so folks can see what you're wearing, you know, and say, once you've seen it, I'm done with that. No, when you clothe yourself, especially with these things that, that God's Word's telling us to, clothing ourselves with uh, uh, among other things kindness and such you do that to kind of 
keep on in your life. It's, it's kind of like God saying, just wrap yourself, wrap it all around you to stay with you through all your day so that kindness is a, just a part of who you are, not just a, a circumstance here, there, or somewhere else. Um, now, there's three ways that you can keep kindness, that you can clothe yourself with kindness and make sure it's just a part of your day-to-day -day living. It's, it's when you begin to, to have kindness in these three ways. It says, you know, you can be, have kindness with your words. You can have kindness with your actions. And you can have kindness with your attitudes. And it's a simple way of kind of keeping that in our hearts and our mind. It's... <laughs> It's important for us to clothe ourselves with the kindness because, you know what, it's so easily, it's so incredibly easy to be unkind. I mean, when we're not mindful of who we are and what we're doing and when somebody just says something or does something to us that we don't like, our tendency sometimes is not to respond with kindness, is it? It's to, to react. You know, just give it back to them and throw it back to them. And it's so incredibly easy for us to not be kind so saying the first thing that comes to your mind uh or not taking the time to to think about our attitude before we speak uh, can result in a lot of hurt feelings and and a lot of things that we may end up regretting however it can also be incredibly easy to be kind with your words now here's how by taking a little extra time to think about your words before you speak them out loud i've had too many times when i've been in a conversation i said something came into my mind and i realized i said it out loud and i'm like i didn't mean to say that out loud you know that was something i needed to just keep under wraps and all but um this may sound like it's a lot of work, but not really when you think about it. Uh, I, I want you to, I got some here. I don't have enough for everybody, just one. Anybody like Twix candy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who wants to know? Uh, here, here's the thing about Twix candy. The people who made this, you know, they're always trying to find different ways of advertising. And, and some of these advertisers are figured out. I'm not supposed to be eating some of these, but they notice these little Twix bars. You can do all kind of things with them, but you, if you hold them up like that, they notice, hey, you know what that looks like? That looks like that pause button on your remote. You know what I'm talking about? You know, you, you have one button that goes like this to go forward and that one to go backwards, but you got, and that one to stop, I guess. But this one is pause. And in fact, when you when you look at the word, Twix on the label, the eye, the dot above the eye almost looks like a remote button. So they they decided to do a whole theme of ads with that. They would they would put people into some very uncomfortable situations where they were asked a question that's kind of difficult or something that was awkward to respond to. It's one of those like uh, and and in the in the commercials you would hear this screeching stop and the action would stop and the person would grab that candy and pop it in her mouth and i'm not gonna do it now because i ain't got time for that but to have to chew it for a little while while you're having that twix moment to think about it and when they finished that then they said something that got them out of the jam they got themselves out of i wish i had that kind of remote in my life yeah <laughs> where things are going around and stuff's happening and I'm about to lose control of it and I just want to say, let's pause everything. Just hold on. And maybe if we could figure out a way to do that in our spirits as we interact with one another, that when we're about to say something that we might later regret or we're about to say something that might hurt someone or, or belittle someone or just uh, mess up their day, just, just take a moment. Take a moment, and it's okay to do that. You don't have to respond right away. So, um, you know, take that moment and say, and what I, and are the words that I'm about to say, 
Are they kind? And you can go on with other things. Are they gentle? Are they showing patience and all that other stuff? Uh, and if the answer is yes, then that's awesome. Go for it. Say it. But if you realize the words you're about to say may be unkind, may be hurtful, may be damaging to that person's spirit, then you might say, maybe I need to say something different and find a different way. That's what being kind is about, clothing yourself with kindness with your words. But also I want you to clothe yourself with kindness in your actions. Yeah, you can keep your mouth shut and still do stuff that hurts people, can't you? Make some decisions to uh, uh, to uh, to react in some way that can be harmful to another person. Now, that may seem like a, a well, duh point, you know. Of course, we're not supposed to act unkind and all. But sometimes in the busyness of our life, our everyday life, we get so wrapped up into handling this responsibility and you've got tests that's coming up and you've got pressure from from your parents and from your teachers and from your friends and 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 you just can't keep up and and next thing you know that you are making a decision to act in a way that's that's just more convenient for you and um you know it's sometimes inconvenient to be kind therefore you know we need to uh, take care we need to watch out on our attitudes because sometimes we had this take care of number one attitude that's all that matters if i'm okay i don't care about the rest of the world but that's really not what we're called about let me let me encourage you this week as you today and throughout the week and throughout your lives as you um are going about your normal routine and as you're as you're uh um uh, living your life wherever you may be take the time uh, to purposefully intentionally make sure that those actions are kind as well um, don't think only about yourself yes have you ever heard somebody says well if you were the only person in this world God you know would have sent Jesus Christ just for you you know that that's how important you are you each are very, very important to God. But you ain't the only one here. Oh, sorry. I'm an English major. I'm not supposed to say ain't. Uh, <laughs> we're not the only one in this world. God created all of us. God loves us all. And so just as God has loved us and has cared for us, maybe we can learn to share that same kind of love and kindness that God has, has given us to us think about the ways that you can exhibit kindness with your actions and and then do it and and push it even further in your life not just worry about having being kind with your words and your actions uh, but you need to work in the heart here that attitude uh, there's sometimes i can say some words that might be true and that might be correct and may sound kind but people can tell i got an attitude about it that i don't really mean what i'm saying so sometimes i've got to do some internal work to see how god is changing my heart remember that's crazy scripture that says don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing <laughs> i never understood that for the longest i thought that's weird how many times do you have your right hand doing something and your left hand's going huh yeah <laughs> what is that talking about it's talking about being in clothing yourself so much with kindness and love and all those wonderful things across that you don't have to be thinking through the rule book oh what's the right word for me to say here let me look it up in my book or what's the outright action for me to do it now let me kind of check the curriculum and see no it's it's not in a book it's in your heart. And so look to have that sense of, of kindness in your heart, in your attitude. <laughs> Some years ago, I'm not a country music fan. How many are country music fans? Uh, God bless you. Uh, I'm not. 
But every once in a while, there's one that catches my attention. And one, oh, Hank Williams Jr., I'm not advocating his lifestyle at all. But he's, he did a song that says, an attitude adjustment makes a whole lot seem brand new. <laughs> and sometimes that's what I need in my life, is to have a little attitude adjustment, to work on my heart, to, to make things different. When, um, when uh, somebody is getting on your nerve or you know um, is your attitude toward them kind you you, you may be like garfield <laughs> garfield garfield says uh did you ever have one of those days <laughs> when you had only had one nerve left and somebody got on it I've had too many of those days when someone has been unkind to you and maybe when things aren't going the way you hope they would go in your life, does your attitude still show a sense of kindness? Uh, don't you realize that there's only there's only one person in this world who has complete control over your attitude you know who that person is you each of you nobody else you know we, we, we like to blame it on somebody well this person made me mad and oh, no this person did whatever and i chose to react by being mad you know this person made me sad well no they didn't make you they may have done something that made you unhappy but you chose to allow that to to mess up your spirit, and your heart. And so I encourage you to kind of uh, think about those things. Um, maybe now's the time to kind of take control in your life. Take control, especially during those situations uh, that can make you be so irritated or maybe act in a selfish way uh, or, or act out with any un other unkind emotion. Now, in those moments, we are called, we need to take a moment, to, to, to just take a deep breath. <laughs> to, and maybe in that breath, say, Lord Jesus, have mercy. <laughs> Lord Jesus, help me. Pray. Pray and ask God to help you make those kind of right decisions. Ask God. And the cool thing is, as Jesus said in the Gospels, you remember, ask and you shall receive. God will, God's Spirit will allow you and help you to make those kind of right decisions in your life. Pray and ask God to say, give me some more kindness in my heart, Lord. Um, I, I, that's one of the... the song prayers that I do cleanse my heart oh God make it ever new and uh, I want to be like you and I had to pray that and sing that over and over again sometimes in my life uh, God loves you and God wants to help you in, in your life some of you know the story of Job in the Old Testament had a really rough time he had three of his friends come and sat with him to grieve with him and for the longest they didn't say a word which probably was the best thing they did but then the problem came is they started to open up their mouths and they started accusing job of a lot of unkind stuff job you must have been a screw-up job you must have done something wrong to get all of this stuff to you job this job that and job is like gee fellas I've, haven't i been hurt enough that y'all gonna add to this and and then Job says to them this. He says, anyone, he says this to his friends, anyone who withholds kindness from a friend forsakes the fear of the Almighty. Now, we're not talking about trembling fear. Oh, I'm scared of God. No, we're talking about having a sense of, of reverence of God. Of, of knowing how awesome this God is that we serve. And, and what Job is saying here is that when we choose to withhold kindness from a friend and even from somebody who may not be your friend, when we make that choice, 
then what we're doing is we're cutting ourselves off from having that kind of relationship with God that God wants to have with us. Uh, if you're not being kind to those around you, you're not respecting God. And that's a big thing, I would think, to know that what I'm saying or what I'm doing or my attitude shows no respect to the one who created me and who loves me. That, that's how important kindness is to God. When we withhold kindness from another, we're ho- withholding our respect from God. Now, it's important to show kindness to everyone. We know that even to the people who, who you don't feel being very kind to, no matter what people look like on the outside, no matter what, uh, what their life looks out, looks like on the outside. You never know what's going on in the inside of their lives. We have a wonderful ability. Somebody once described me as I'm like a duck on the water, you know, just calm as can be going across that pond, but underneath the water I'm paddling like I'll get out to stay afloat. And that's how our life is sometimes. And that's how probably the person sitting next to you is that, that they may seem they're come cool and collected, but that's mess going on that you don't know about. I found this uh, post that I made and then I shared on my, on, on my social media, and it really touched my heart. It says this, and I'm going to close it. It says, many people, many people you meet are hanging by the thinnest of threads. Your simple kindness can be that thread hear that you have a choice to be that little thing that helps someone else hold on for another day that's so true your kindness can mean all the world to others sometimes we have regrets in our life it's been over 40 years since i've been sitting where Y'all are not not in this academy. I'm not going to tell y'all that I went to Harding Academy, Memphis, boo-boo. Yeah, <laughs> don't hold that against me. Yeah. <laughs> but in those years since then, I, I've done some things. I've said some things I've regretted. I have done some things I have regretted. I've had attitudes sometimes with others that I've been disappointed in myself. But never ever, ever in all my life of seeking to try to live for Christ, never have I ever regretted doing a kindness to someone else. And so my prayer is you is that you can keep that in your heart and your mind as you go through whatever it is God's got you going through today, that we know that here is something that we can clothe ourselves with, wrap it around us, and hold us as God holds us in the palm of his hands. Let us pray. God, I asked for your love to be so powerful and profound in our lives that we might more fully experience it today. May your love flow through each one of us to others. God, I ask that you would clothe us with your kindness compassion, gentleness, and patience. May your brand of kindness, uh, may it grow within us so that we can live for others sacrificially with acts of kindness just as you have given yourself sacrificially for us. Give each student, teacher, and administrator in this school and all the families that they represent the ability to be solid, steadfast, dependable, reliable, loyal, trustworthy, and kind. Help us all to take the time we need to make sure all our words and all our actions and all our attitudes are pleasing in your sight. This we pray in the name of our Lord, who is so full of compassion and grace. Amen.
Well, we've got the great privilege today of hearing from one of our sixth graders. How many of you got to see Madagascar? Anybody? Awesome. Yeah. Well, if you missed it, I know. Yeah. yeah. 